Hello everyone, and welcome back to another exciting After Effects tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how I created this animation in After Effects. Alright, let's start from scratch and see how I created this logo in Illustrator. This process is very important, so don't skip the video. I've set up my canvas at 1920 by 1080 pixels, and I've already created the background. First of all, click the button to create a new layer. Next, simply rename this layer with a letter. After that, select the text tool and type anything you want. Then, go ahead and change the color to suit your needs. Now I'm going to change the font. I used this particular font for our logo, and you can download it from the link in the description below. I'll select the font, then align the logo to the center of the canvas. Once done, select the logo, right-click, and choose Create Outlines. This will convert your text into shapes. Now, right-click again, and choose the Ungroup option to separate the letters. As you can see, the letters are now successfully separated. But if I zoom in a little bit, you'll notice that when I try to move a letter, it's connected to other shapes, so we can't move them individually yet. To make the animation easier in After Effects, we need to create each letter's box separately. To do this, deselect the shape, create a new layer, and rename it Outline. Then select the Rectangle tool and create a shape. I'll change the color so it's easier for you to see. Now, duplicate this shape and place it on top of the letter. Repeat this process for all the letters, creating new blocks and placing them one by one. Alright, we've successfully created the blocks for each letter. Next, lock the letter layer. Then, select all the blocks and move them upwards. Now, unlock the letter layer, select it, and delete the letters. At this point, we have our blocks as the logo, but the work isn't finished yet. These blocks are under the outline layer, and there are a lot of shapes we need to prepare for animation. To do this, select the outline layer, click the small circle next to it, and click on the options menu. Here, you'll find the option, Release to Layers Sequence. Select this option so that Illustrator converts each shape into an individual layer. Now select all the layers and move them out of the outline layer. You can now delete the outline layer. At this point, if you want to, you can rename each shape layer. This will help you later when animating in After Effects. I'm going to change the color of this logo to white. And don't forget the most important step, saving your project. To save, simply click File, then Save. Choose the folder where you want to save it, name your file, and save it as an Illustrator file. That's how you can easily create this logo in Illustrator. We've just finished the logo design process, so let's move into After Effects and animate this logo. First things first, let's import our logo. To import, simply navigate to this panel and double-click to bring in your file. Next, locate the logo file where you saved it. Once you find it, select the logo and make sure to choose Import as Composition, Retain Layer Sizes. Then, just click Import. Great, we've successfully imported our logo as a composition into this panel. Now, go ahead and double-click on this composition to open it up. Here you'll see our Illustrator layers that we created in Illustrator. To save time, I've already named each layer as you can see. Now let's convert these Illustrator layers into shape layers. First, select all the layers, then right-click and go to Create. Under the Create options, choose Create Shapes from Vector Layer. After that, you can go ahead and delete the original Illustrator layers. All right, let's animate the letter C first. Simply select all the letters except the C layers, then hide and lock them for a cleaner workspace. 
Let me zoom in a bit so you can see that we now have only the C letter layers in our composition, making it easier for us to animate them. To start animating, select the first layer, named C1 Outline. Then, open its properties. Under the Transform section, you'll find the Position and Scale properties. First, position the time indicator at the 1 second mark, and add a keyframe right here. Next, move the time indicator backward around 30 frames, and add another keyframe. Now pay close attention. At this point, you'll notice a link icon in the scale properties. Let me take a moment to explain this. The first value represents the X scale, and the second represents the Y scale. If I adjust the scale properties now, you'll see the X and Y values change together. However, we want them to change independently. So I'll turn off this link by clicking on the icon. Now if I change the X value of the scale, I can adjust it without affecting the Y value, and vice versa. I hope you understand the significance of this icon. Now let's move forward. At the 30 frame mark, I'll adjust the position of this block like this. Then, I'll move the time indicator back to the first frame and reposition the block accordingly. Right now you can see that the path of this block is curved, and we need to fix that. To do so, go to the Pen Tool section and select the Convert Vertex tool. Click on this vertex to smooth out the curve. Next, add a scale keyframe at this point, setting the X value of the scale to 40%, and the Y value to 0%. Then, move the time indicator to the second keyframe, and adjust the X value of the scale to 40%. Now, slide the time indicator around the 17th frame, or between these two frames, and change the Y value of the scale to about 750%. After that, move the time indicator to around the 50 frame mark, or between these two frames, and set the X value of the scale to about 300%. Let's check out the animation so far. Finally, select all the keyframes and convert them into Easy Ease keyframes. This will make our animation smoother. Nice! As we animate the first layer, we need to replicate the process for the second layer. For instance, select the second layer, which is named C2 Outline. Next, open the Transform Properties, and under these properties, add keyframes for both the position and scale values. Now head back to the 30th frame, and add keyframes once again. Remember to uncheck the Link icon. It's crucial to uncheck this icon for every layer. After that, reposition this block to your desired location. Next, adjust the scale values by setting the X value of the scale to around 40%. Then move back to the first frame and reposition this box accordingly. If you notice that this box path looks curved in the composition, we'll need to correct it. To remove the handle, go to the Pen Tool section and select the Convert Vertex tool. Simply click on this vertex to straighten it out. Now, return to the scale properties, add a keyframe, and set the Y value of the scale to 0%. Then, move the time indicator between these two keyframes, and change the Y value to approximately 700%. Next, slide the time indicator to the midpoint of these keyframes, and adjust the X value of the scale to around 200%. Let's check the animation by dragging the time indicator. Once that's done, select all the keyframes and convert them to Easy Ease keyframes. This adjustment will smooth out the animation. Take a moment to preview the animation. This is a straightforward technique to create this type of animation for a logo. I use the same method to animate each box, and I suggest you do the same for all your letters. To keep this video short, I won't show how to animate each box one by one, so I quickly animate the rest of the letters and get back to the video. 
All right, I've animated the rest of the layers using this technique, and you can see the result. Right now, all the animations start simultaneously, and we need to rearrange the layers to introduce some variation. Before we do that, let me show you how to create a flicker effect. First, select the first layer, C1 Outline, and solo this layer. Next, zoom in a little, and open the opacity settings for this layer. Add a keyframe at this point, and set the opacity value to 0%. Then move the time indicator forward a bit and change the opacity to around 75%. After that, move the time indicator again and change the opacity to 20%. Essentially, I want to create a flickering effect by varying the opacity values. I adjust these values by percentage, creating keyframes for each change. Just ensure that the last keyframe's value is set to 100%. Afterward, check the animation. You should see a smooth flickering effect in the composition. Next, I'll refine the keyframes. I select all the keyframes, right-click, and choose Toggle Hold Keyframe. This technique allows me to replicate the flicker effect across the layers. You can observe the animation preview in the composition. Now simply copy these keyframes and paste them onto a few random layers one by one. You don't need to apply them to all the layers, just a select few to achieve some variation. All right, after that, select the layers individually and rearrange them randomly. By employing this technique, you'll create a dynamic random animation of these blocks. Let's take a look at the final preview. And that's how you can create this kind of custom logo animation in After Effects. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked my content, I encourage you to support me and my channel. The support link is in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.